visions of what life can be, of what life should be, have widened our horizons and deepened our knowledge of the great goal that separates what we have and are from what we feel we should be. We have been taught by newspapers, magazines, motion pictures, radios, visitors, something of the higher standards of well-being of the mainland of North America. We have become uncomfortably aware of the low standards of our country, and we are driven irresistibly to wonder whether our attempt to persist in isolation is the root cause of our condition. We have often felt in the past when we learned something of the higher standards of the mainland, that such things belong to another world, that they were not for us. But today we are not so sure that two yardsticks were designed by the Almighty to measure the standards of well-being. One yardstick for the mainland of the continent and another for the island that lies beside it. Today we are not so sure, not so ready to take it for granted that we Newfoundlanders are destined to accept much lower standards of life than our neighbors of Canada and the United States. Today, we are more disposed to feel that our very manhood, our very creation by God, entitles us to standards of life no lower than our brothers of the mainland. Our Newfoundland is known to possess natural wealth of considerable value and variety. Without at all exaggerating their extent, we know that our fisheries are in the front rank of the world's marine resources. We have considerable forest, water power, and mineral resources. Our Newfoundland people are industrious, hardworking, frugal, ingenious, and sober. This combination of such natural resources and such people should spell a prosperous country, enjoying high standards, Western world standards of living. This combination should spell fine, modern, well-equipped homes, lots of health-giving food, ample clothing, the modern amenities of the new world civilization, good roads, good schools, good hospitals, high levels of private and public health. It should spell a vital, prosperous, progressive country. It has not spelt any such things. Compared with the mainland of North America, we are 50 years, in some things 100 years behind the times. We live more poorly, more shabbily, more meanly. Our life is more of a struggle. Our struggle is tougher, more naked, more hopeless. In the North American family, Newfoundland bears the reputation of having the lowest standards of life, of being the least progressive and advanced of the whole family. We all love this land. It has a charm that warms our hearts, go where we will, a charm, a magic, a mystical tug on our emotion that never dies. With all her faults, we love her. But a metamorphosis, morti, morti, a metamorphosis steals over us the moment we cross the border that separates us from other lands. As we leave Newfoundland, we leave the higher standards behind, and our minds undergo a, re, a transformation. We expect and we take for granted a higher, a more modern way of life. As such as it would have seemed ridiculous or even avarice to expect at home. And as we return to Newfoundland, we leave these higher standards behind and our minds undergo a reverse transformation. We have grown accustomed to our own lower standards and more antiquated methods and old-fashioned conveniences that we readjust ourselves unconsciously to the meaner standards under which we grew up. 
We are so used to our railway and our coastal boats that we scarcely see them. So used to our settlements and roads and homes and schools and hospitals and hotels and everything else. But we do not even see their inadequacy, their backwardness, their seeminess. We have grown up in an atmosphere of struggle, of adversity, of mean times, that we are never surprised, certainly never shocked, when we learn that we have one of the highest rates of tuberculosis in the world, one of the highest infant mortality rates in the world, one of the highest maternal mortality rates in the world, one of the highest rates of very, very and rickets in the world. We take those shocking facts for granted. We take for granted our lower standards, our poverty. We are not indignant about them. We save our indignation for those who publish such facts. For with all our complacency, with all our readiness to receive, to take for granted and even to justify these things amongst ourselves, we are strange to say angry and hurt when those shocking facts become known to the outside world. We have a perfect right to decide that we will turn away from North American standards of living and from North American standards of public services and condemn ourselves as people and government to deliberately to long years of struggle to maintain even the little that we have. We may, if we wish, turn our backs upon the North American continent beside which God placed us and resign ourselves to the meaner outlook and shabbier standards of Europe, 2,000 miles across the ocean. Oh, we can do this. Or we can face the fact that the very logic of our situation on the surface of this globe impels us to draw closer to the progressive outlook and dynamic living standards of this continent. Our danger, so it seems to me, is that of del nursing delusions of grandeur. We remember the stories of states that valiantly preserve their natural independence and develop their own proud cultures. But we tend to overlook the fact that in comparison of Newfoundland with them, is ludicrous. We are not a nation. We are merely a medium-sized municipality, a mere miniature borough of a large city. There indeed were a time when tiny states lived gloriously that time is now ancient European history. We are trying to live in a mid-20th century, post-Hitler new world. We are living in a world in which small countries have less chance than ever before of surviving. Confederation I will support if it means a lower cost of living for our people. Confederation I will support if it means a higher standard of life for our people. Confederation I will support if it gives us strength, stability, and security for New <coughs> land. I will support Confederation if it gives us democratic government. I will support Confederation if it rids us of commission government. I will support Confederation if it gives us responsible government under conditions that will give responsible government a real chance of su to succeed. Confederation I will support if it makes us a province enjoying privileges and rights no lower than any other province. I believe that this move will lead to a brighter and happier life for our Newfoundland people. With God's grace, let us move forward to a brighter and happier Newfoundland.